Batman, the Dark Knight, the Caped Crusader. He's been a part of our cultural landscape for nearly 80 years, first appearing in Detective Comics number 27 in 1939. Many of Hollywood's biggest stars have donned the cowl and cape over the years, but on June 9, 2017, the world lost one of these legends, Adam West. To honor him and others who have gone before, today we're visiting the final resting places of those who lived to entertain us in the city of Gotham. We begin our tour at the Courts of Liberty at Forest Lawn Hollywood Hills with the man who started it all, Bob Kane. He worked as an artist and writer for DC Comics in the 30s, and with the success of Superman sought to create his own hero, and so he conceived the Batman. He cited inspirations like Douglas Fairbanks' Zorro, Da Vinci sketches, and the 1930 film The Bat Whispers. His original design had red tights, a small domino mask, and bat wings instead of a cape. He worked with other artists and writers including Bill Finger to develop the character and world we know today. Other characters he created include Two-Face, the Scarecrow, and Catwoman, who he claimed was modeled after Gene Harlow. Kane parlayed his success as the Batman creator into minor celebrity, and was a consultant on the 1989 Batman film and its sequels. While Bob Kane conceived of the idea of Batman, a lesser known but no less important figure in the creation and development of Batman is Bill Finger, considered the co-creator of Batman. Bill was a writer who helped develop the look of Batman, giving him a cowl and cape, a darker outfit, and came up with his secret identity, Bruce Wayne. Bill wrote many of the early Batman stories and was a major contributor in the creation of other characters like the Joker. During his life, he was not given the credit he was due, as Bob Kane often claimed sole credit. Bill Finger died in 1974, largely unrecognized for his contributions. He was cremated, his ashes scattered in the shape of a bat on an Oregon beach. In 2015, DC finally officially recognized Bill Finger as the co-creator of Batman, promising he would receive credit on all future productions. In 2017, Hulu released a documentary about Bill's story. Bill Finger was the dominant creative force of Batman, Robin, the Joker, Catwoman, the Riddler, the Penguin, the Scarecrow, Commissioner Gordon, Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson, and Gotham City. I know Bob trying to take credit for everything. Everything you would think is good, that's Bill. So how could this not have been so well known? I was a ghost, and I really was. Bill was Batman's secret identity. It became a crusade, getting Bill's name on Batman. Superheroes are not doing this to get paid or praised. They are doing something for the greater good, then they disappear into the night. Without Bill, there'd be no Batman. So what happened to Bill Finger? Back at Forest Lawn Hollywood, in the Courts of Remembrance, along the northeast wall of the second courtyard is the crypt of the very first actor to play Batman on screen, Lewis Wilson. It was the young actor's screen debut in the 1943 film serial, Batman. The series consisted of 15 chapters. In a chamber hewn from the living rock of the mountain is the strange, dimly lighted, mysteriously secret Bat's Cave, hidden headquarters of America's number one crime fighter, Batman. Clad in the somber costume which has struck terror to the heart of many a swaggering denizen of the underworld, Batman, who even now is pondering the plans of a new assault against the forces of crime. Just a few miles northwest of here is Valhalla Cemetery. In the northern part of the cemetery, Block G, we find the second actor to play Batman on screen, Robert Lowry. The follow-up to the 1943 Batman serial was another serial called Batman and Robin. It too consisted of 15 chapters and was released in 1949, with Lowry now playing the caped crusader. Diamonds. That proves it's the same bunch who stole the remote control machine.
The third actor to play Batman was the inimitable Adam West, immortalized for his role in the 60s TV series Batman, and the follow-up feature film in 1966. His was a new kind of Batman, colorful and delightfully campy, while still played very straight. Adam died in June of 2017, and his final resting place is unknown, but Los Angeles held a public memorial for Adam, lighting up City Hall with the bat signal, and the script, The City of Los Angeles Honors Adam West, 1928-2017. to Thousands of fans attended the ceremony, with tributes given by several of his Batman co-stars, including the boy wonder himself, Burt Ward, who played Robin. Younger audiences will also remember him as Mayor Adam West on Family Guy. Down in San Diego, at Fort Rosecrans National Cemetery, is the grave of the very first actor to play Robin, the boy wonder on screen, Douglas Croft. He starred alongside Lewis Wilson in the 1943 serial, Batman. He was only 16 at the time. A crushing blow against evil in which he will have the valuable aid of his young, two-fisted assistant, Robin the Boy Wonder. There would be no need for Batman without an eclectic array of villains running amok in Gotham, the most notorious of which is Batman's arch nemesis, the Joker whose devilish smile and maniacal laugh have delighted and terrified audiences for generations. He was created by Bob Kane, Bill Finger, and Jerry Robinson in 1940, and was inspired by Conrad Veidt's Gwynplaine in The Man Who Laughs. In the mausoleum of the Golden West at Inglewood Cemetery, south of Los Angeles, we find the niche and harp-shaped urn of the first actor to play Joker on screen, and the man who set the standard for all Jokers to follow. Cesar Romero. He played the psychopathic jester in the 60s TV series. One of the many quirks Romero imbued in his Joker was the application of the makeup right over top his trademark mustache. No more will they jeer and scoff or cut their circulation off. If they do not see the joke, pull the ropes and let them choke. <laughs> Let's head now to the other side of the world, to Australia. Many of Hollywood's greatest actors have donned the white makeup and mad grin of the Joker, but if I could put my usual objectivity aside a moment, the dark and disturbing performance given by Heath Ledger in the 2008 film The Dark Knight might just be the best. Critics were skeptical at first of the casting of Heath, but he quickly proved them wrong with his portrayal of the psychopathic, mass-murdering, schizophrenic clown with zero empathy. How about a magic trick? I'm gonna make this pencil disappear. Ta -da! It's... it's gone. Tragically, Heath died of an accidental drug overdose before the film was even released. He was posthumously awarded a Best Supporting Actor Oscar for his portrayal of the Joker. After his death, Heath was cremated, his ashes scattered at the site of his grandparents' grave at Karakata Cemetery in Perth, Australia. In 2009, a monument to Heath was created at Point Heathcote Reserve near his hometown. Back in California, at Forest Lawn Hollywood Hills, just northwest of the Courts of Remembrance is the grave of Michael Ancera. He provided the voice of Mr. Freeze on Batman the Animated Series. I can only beg your forgiveness and pray you hear me somehow, some place. Some place where a warm hand waits for mine. For our next stop, we'll travel all the way across the country to beautiful Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Calvary Cemetery, where Frank Gorshin is buried. Gorshin was an actor, comedian, and impressionist known for being the first actor to portray Gotham villain The Riddler on screen. The Riddler made his first appearance in Detective Comics 140 in 1948, his modus operandi being the use of puzzles and riddles in his crimes. Gorshin played the Riddler in 10 episodes of the 60s TV series Batman, a role which earned him an Emmy nomination. Riddle me this, my criminal crew! When does a boy wonder rhyme with bubble? When he's in trouble. Wrong! When he's double. <laughs> Split in two halves, right down the middle.
A few of the Batman stars who have passed away don't have a final resting place because they were cremated, their ashes either scattered or privately held. Let's take a moment to remember them. Legendary character actor Burgess Meredith was the first to portray the Penguin on screen in the 60s TV series. British actor Michael Goff played Alfred Pennyworth in four Batman movies beginning with Tim Burton's Batman in 1989. Yvonne Craig played Batgirl, aka Barbara Gordon, in the 60s TV series. Other characters from that series include George Sanders, the first actor to play Mr. Freeze on screen, Eartha Kitt, one of the actresses who portrayed Catwoman, and Neil Hamilton, who played Commissioner Gordon. At Holy Cross Cemetery in Culver City, California, we find one of the men behind the legendary Batman TV series of the 1960s, William Dozier. Not only did he produce the show, he was also the narrator. Could this mean curtains? Will the identities of our dynamic duo be revealed to the whole world? Is this the end of their career as crime fighters? Can they avert disaster? Answers tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. In addition, he co-created the Barbara Gordon character, also known as Batgirl. The world of Batman has also brought us some amazing music over the years. At Hollywood Forever Cemetery, right in the heart of Hollywood, in the Hall of David, we find the niche of composer Nelson Riddle. He wrote the music for both the 60s TV series and the 1966 film Batman the Movie. Singer Prince wrote and performed several songs for Tim Burton's Batman in 1989, including The Bat Dance. <laughs> Prince died in 2016, his ashes kept in an urn at his Paisley Park studio in Minnesota. The urn itself is a mini replica of Paisley Park. We'll finish our tour back where we started, at Forest Lawn Hollywood Hills, in the Courts of Remembrance. In the Sanctuary of Enduring Protection, just south of the Christus, is the crypt of Neil Hefty. He was a composer for film and television. He's the man who wrote that iconic main theme for the 60s Batman TV series. concludes our tour. What are some of your favorite memories from the city of Gotham? Share them in the comments below, and be sure to tune in next time for more famous graves. Same grave time, same grave channel. Thanks for watching.